I think I'm showing right now that you guys are, you lost your marbles, the two of you. You're looking for a unicorn. <laughs> Attachment is a bitch. Those were my exact words a year ago as we were packing to leave the US, dealing with endless possessions. It's a funny thing we do as human beings. We love attaching ourselves to things, to people, to places, to ideas. There is comfort and safety in glomming on to someone or something. It's who or what we love after all, or what has meaning to us, or what makes us feel good. So of course we do everything we can to hang on. Why wouldn't we? The problem is that that's the perfect formula for getting stuck in any given situation. Attachments weigh you down, making it impossible for any change to happen if you continue married to the status quo. And it's precisely what happened here in France as we gingerly went about our house search. What started off as, let's patiently ride out winter, and as soon as spring rolls around, homes will surely show up on the market and we'll find exactly what we want, became, it's already April and we're feeling stuck and depressed living in this gloomy and uncomfortable long-term Airbnb. With zero hope in sight, finding what we want could take a million years. It took some time to realize that this was, in effect, another case of attachment. We'd gotten attached to where we were geographically, to what was possible there, to how things needed to pan out, in spite of signals telling us this ain't working. Fortunately, this story does have a happy ending because we did manage to get ourselves unstuck in due time and with some very promising results. Close one door and you open another. It wasn't easy though, it never is. It seems that for us human beings, we need to hit some kind of bottom before it hurts enough that we'll even consider making a change. We had returned to the Eveling area early in the year thrilled to be planting ourselves somewhere for an extended period of time. We were back to one of the better Airbnbs we had stayed at, with all the amenities we needed, fantastic hosts, and in a beautiful area. We focused on learning French, studying up on driving rules towards updating our driver licenses, enjoying shopping locally for amazing ingredients. You like shopping here? And of course, searching for homes ongoingly, which Cecilia spearheaded. And in her own true style, that meant daily long sessions obsessively poring over listings. More on that whole process later. In contrast to all the hopping around we had been doing for months on end, it sure felt nice to have some sense of home at long last. One of the big milestones to be crossed in March was receiving our goods being shipped by container, which had been slowly making their way across the ocean. Part of the focus was getting the paperwork ready in order to ensure duty-free entry into the country which we successfully accomplished, saving us thousands of euros. Talk about attachments. We marveled at what it took to get what seemed like just a few things transported over. The cost, the time, the energy, the effort to ensure that certain items remained in our possession. Stuff will own you if you let it, let me tell you. And we are no exception. Did it all arrive just fine? Look that way. We won't really know until we finally move into our future home and are able to take a closer look. So this particular town we were staying at in the Eveline that we love so much had us really hooked. Gorgeous open fields, horses, beautiful homes, and this amazing market nearby with incredible specialty items. Amazing meats, stunningly fresh produce, cheeses to die for, and I could just keep going. As the weeks progressed, Cecilia was putting in massive time into the search, meticulously browsing the somewhat equivalent RMLS site here in France, but also specific agency sites to ensure nothing was missed. As I've explained before, there is no main RMLS site here in France that encompasses everything, so in order to cover all your bases, you have to hit all the important sites. We had a multi-page PDF we had created with all of our details that she submitted easily to 30 to 40 agencies. We really, really, really wanted to find something in this area. That's how attached we were to it, or at least I was. Not necessarily a home in this particular town we loved, 
but certainly in the immediate region within a certain radius. Time and again, crickets. Agents would not respond. They might acknowledge receiving the document, but after that, hardly any reach outs whatsoever letting us know about anything. And believe me, Cecilia would beg them, sometimes repeatedly, to please let us know before anything hit the market so we could have first bids. We even included that we were ready to pay cash as an added incentive. Nothing. Only time we'd establish actual contact was when she'd request to go see a property she had found, sometimes having to insist multiple times in order to get an appointment. On a few occasions, no one ever got back. Now, I should explain that these sites don't properly indicate when a home has been sold. So, more often than not, silence means that it's off the market. We also thought that maybe we were the pesky foreigners with our high demands. Therefore, agents were less likely to want to work with us? Who knows? One thing that Cecilia started suggesting was to go talk in person with these agents. Something she's very comfortable with that I'm not. She's very free in that sense, calling people up unable to communicate freely and dealing with sorting out the details later. Drives me nuts. I need to prepare ahead of time. Know what I'm going to say as much as possible. Be ready for possible scenarios. So my tendency is to shy away from those situations. Something I'm actively working on that requires that I mentally prepare to face those very uncomfortable scenarios. Anyhow, whenever I hear her talking to someone, I go into a panic because I know there's a high likelihood that she's going to pull me into the conversation claiming that I speak better French. Not a fun experience. It does always work out fine. People have been tremendously patient with us, but it's not something that I naturally want to throw myself into. To help us along on our linguistic journey, Babbel, the sponsor of this video, has been an indispensable tool. I think we can all agree that effective communication is crucial to functioning in society. I mean, without even a basic level of French, it would be impossible to navigate life the way we have been. Babbel is an incredibly easy to use app that allows you to learn more than 14 languages through short 15 minute sessions. Not only have these sessions fit in beautifully into our schedules, but they're also time well spent that always feels very satisfying. We've been using other means to learn French, but Babbel stands out for their expertise. They have a vast team of experts who prepare lessons with real-life language and everyday conversations, enabling us to speak fluently and naturally. We can practice grammar, improve our listening skills, work on our accent, and all of this conveniently available on our phones. My wife and I have seen marked improvement in our French from steady use of this amazing app. For us, not learning French was never an option. If we're going to live here, then we must become proficient in the language and Babbel has been our daily companion in making that happen. If you're interested, get up to 50% off and two free live classes in your account when you subscribe today using the link in the description below. Thank you, Babbel, for sponsoring this video. The closer we got to spring, the more hopeful we became that the market would pick up. After all, that's what happens traditionally. But after winter had come and gone, nothing dramatic really happened. Maybe a few more homes were showing up than usual, but not the sort of selection we were holding our breath for. What had given us hope was that homes fitting our criteria had been available previously in fall. So logic would say that more of the same should be happening. However, as it turns out, world events were having a heavy effect on what the market was willing to yield. Interest rates were going up, but nobody seemed to care. Prices were on the rise in spite of homes coming on the market that were in some cases in serious need of remodeling. Oh boy. The house is from 1740. It is way bigger than what we need. It needs a lot of work. But it's gorgeous. But to you, it's got a lot of charm. The beams, the, oh my God. the structure the itself. The things the, I could do with the house. The floor. So I, I don't know. I, I get a little hesitant around having to do too much. Everything is... Está bien dejado. Well, nobody has lived in the house for a year. Since and the 1700s. Yes. And they were all getting snatched up right away due to high demand. How was this possible? In the process of searching, Cecilia was also absorbing critical information about the market through conversations with people, reading articles, watching the news. COVID, without a doubt, changed everything. People worldwide migrated out of cities during and after the pandemic either to country homes they owned or through purchasing new properties away from the city. 
people wanted space, freedom. And because many were working from home anyway, it didn't make sense anymore to be stuck in crowded spaces. Add to this supply chain issues that were affecting home building. A shortage of materials and workforce were having a serious effect on homes being built. Therefore, less inventory with a high demand that persists to this day. People have been so desperate to buy that high interest rates are doing nothing to slow down the process, as we had been expecting. To complicate matters even more, the French discouraged the buying and selling of property. They penalized you heavily for flipping homes, unlike the system in the US. So accordingly, people here in France hang on to their homes. Easy to see how all these factors were really affecting results for us. We were not finding good options that met our requirements. Old world charm, a big enough home with a big enough yard, remotely located yet close to amenities, good energy ratings. Like I said, many homes were sizable remodeled projects. And as you might know by now, we've been down that path before and are in no mood to do that again. C'est incroyable. <laughs> Cosmetic changes, sure, but no heavy behind-the-wall structural stuff. Now, Cecilia's instinct was absolutely right, in that the French prefer to talk on the phone or meet in person. They communicate best through human interaction. In the US, it's different. Not to say that Americans are antisocial, but texting and emailing are very much accepted go-to ways of communicating in that part of the world. And I wasn't getting it, especially because of my tendency to pull back. I wasn't understanding that if you want the French to give you their attention, you have to play by the rules. In the end, it's not really clear how much more that would have helped our cause, but it would have surely gotten us to visit more home possibilities. A strange thing was happening too as the weeks rolled by. Cecilia was getting really strong signals not to rent. We were both dying to move somewhere more comfortable, but her inner voice kept saying, stay put, don't rent. And we both know to pay attention to that these days more than ever, to give that inner guidance weight, which has served us really well many a time. Now, I've called my wife the instigator before. She's an ideas person, a mover and shaker, super creative and always thinking outside the box. She had gotten curious about what else might be out there in other areas. And when she saw a particular comment someone had made to one of our own videos about Champagne, she decided to put some attention there. She managed to find an interesting home in that region that she showed my son Nathan and I, but which we both shrugged off. The house seemed too far, too big, not sure what the exact complaints were at the time, but it sat there for several weeks in her bookmarked properties. By the time Nathan came over to visit us for a couple of days in early April, Cecilia was super frustrated with not finding any really good local options in the Eveline region, and with me and my inflexibility. I kept telling her, give this more time, something will show up. But the fact is that I was clueless. She was the one putting in endless hours into the searching, not me, and knew all too well that the market was just not yielding for us. Our son's visit was instrumental. He did a fantastic job of showing the two of us that based on our criteria, we were never going to find what we wanted locally. He also made me realize that looking outside the box was an absolute must, something that my wife had been right about all along. Okay, so I need a little ass kicking from time to time, which tends to be the case for me. I remind you, I can be really stubborn. That's when the grip started loosening up for me, and we both agreed that exploring other regions was beneficial and that we could treat it as a fun search adventure. It didn't have to be a burden, we could just explore and enjoy the process. And that's exactly what we did. We went to see that one property she had found and in fact liked it so much that we returned for a long weekend to explore the area further. We stayed at a bed and breakfast that was absolutely lovely and that provided just the perfect restful and reinvigorating getaway that we needed. Could this one property be our future home? Well, you're gonna have to stay tuned to find out.